This video is sponsored by World of Warships. In 1944, the Imperial Japanese Navy was desperately searching for ways to keep U.S. forces from encroaching on their home islands. B-29s were already bombing Japan's cities, and the occupied Philippines were in conflict with U.S. troops trying to reclaim the area. They needed to halt the Philippine liberation and repel any further attacks against the homeland. In response, Japan decided to build a single ship to rule them all. It would be a secret supercarrier that was to conquer the oceans as a floating, invincible weapon. Its existence was a closely guarded secret known only to the crew of a single American reconnaissance aircraft and a single American submarine after its launch. The Shinano was a desperate attempt by the Japanese to take back initiative in the Pacific following the Battle of Midway, in which the United States struck what military historian John Keegan called the most stunning and decisive blow in the history of naval warfare. For the Japanese, the battle was a strategic blunder. But what if you had been in charge? Take command of your own massive naval fleets of destroyers, cruisers, battleships, and aircraft carriers to protect the homeland and conquer the oceans yourself in World of Warships, the thinking man's action game. Highly realistic and free to play, you'll join more than 30 million players worldwide to command some of history's most iconic war vessels. Each of the 300 available warships from 10 different world powers take the World of Warships production team six months to create, ensuring gameplay is highly realistic and accurate. Players must make strategic and tactical decisions, respond to flanking attacks and ambushes, and manage the intense forces of the oceans to claim victory in some of the most epic sea battles of the 20th century. Click on the link in the description below and use the invitation code BATTLESTATIONS2020 to receive free bonuses, including 250 doubloons, 3 days of premium play, 1 million credits, premium ship USS Charleston, and 1 port slot. The invitation code is only available to new players who are registering on the Wargaming portal for the first time. A battleship becomes a supercarrier. The Shinano was initially designed as an enormous battleship to go along with the smaller Mushashi and Yamoto battleships. This project changed while in development due to the crippling loss of Japanese carriers during the Battle of Midway. Shinano was altered so it could become the largest carrier at the time. The ship was named according to Japanese tradition after a medieval town. Its existence and development were kept tightly under wraps. Concrete walls and a roof were built to hide the dry dock, and workers were not allowed to leave their assigned positions during 16-hour shifts. The dock was off-limits for those not involved in the construction. The secret police, Kenai Peitai, supervised the security of the dock. All employees working on the Shinano were threatened with strict punishment for mentioning the new ship, and it's been suggested that even execution was on the table for those who broke the code of silence. It was essential for the Japanese to keep the supercarrier in their dry dock number 6 at the Yokosuka Naval Shipyard an absolute secret. If the United States got so much as a whiff of what they were up to, the enemy nation would be compelled to send bombers to Tokyo Bay and stop the project before it was anywhere close to being completed. The Japanese were also heavily counting on the element of surprise for intimidation. They wanted the massive, terrifying supercarrier to show up in the Philippines almost out of nowhere and strike fear in the enemy's heart. As a result of this strict policy, the secret was kept. The Shinano was one of the only major warships of the 20th century that was never professionally photographed during construction. In fact, only two valid photographs of the ship have ever been released. A picture taken by a reconnaissance craft from 9,800 meters in altitude on November 1st, 1944, and a picture taken by a civilian on a tugboat who captured one of the first sea trials of the ship. The battleship had been scheduled to be finished in April of 1945, but after the instructed changes to make it a carrier, and the massive losses suffered at American hands in the Battle of the Philippine Sea, production was pushed to its limits. Japan feared that the U.S. would bomb the Japanese islands from their military bases at the Mariana Islands. A deadline was set for October, but no additional workers could be hired efficiently, so the existing workers were pressed into around-the-clock work. The monstrous carrier was completed and ready for trials on November 19, 1944. Not the intended deadline, but close to it. The first launch had actually taken place on October 8th, arguably meeting the deadline, but the supercarrier was not finished at that point. With a length of 872 feet, or 265 meters, with a weight of 69,151 metric tons at normal load, Shinano was the heaviest carrier at the time, and could carry 2,400 crew members and officers. The carrier was well armed, with 16 40 caliber dual purpose guns, which had a range of 16,100 yards, or 14,700 meters. They could fire up to 8 rounds per minute. 
It also had 15 triple gun mounts of light AA guns, which could shoot around 110 rounds per minute, intended to take down enemy aircraft, but recognized as mildly inadequate to take down high-speed moving targets due to poor movement, blinding muzzle flashes, and strong vibration. It could also hold four dozen fighters for self-defense, but its main purpose was intended to be an unusual hybrid support carrier that could carry weapons, fuel, and repair facilities for Japan's remaining aircraft carrier fleet. She was massive and well-equipped to fend off almost any surface or air attack. A Bad Omen Shinano's giant sister battleships had been having tough luck. Mushashi had been taken down at the Battle of Leyte Gulf, while Yamato had suffered significant damage by the time Shinano was commissioned. But before that, the new supercarrier had an incident that made superstitious workers stay away with panic and fear. On October 8, 1944, the ship was almost ready, four months ahead of the original plan. That day, the caisson used as a dry dock, which weighed 5,000 tons, gave in and cracked, yielding to the vast amount of water which lifted the carrier and slammed it against the dock's headwall as more than a hundred mooring lines tore. The Shinano was pushed back and forth by the motion of the water until the water levels inside and outside the dock matched. Thankfully, there were no casualties. There were only a few injured crew members. The bow structure of the carrier was damaged and repairs lasted until October 26th, pushing the whole operation back. Wounded soldiers and construction workers had to be replaced, but no one wanted to take those jobs. Japanese sailors were superstitious, and to them the ship's incident was a bad omen a promise of something worse yet to come. The existing crew and the forced new members saw a blow to their morale, confident that the grand supercarrier would be lost. Construction Challenges When the Imperial Japanese Navy saw an urgent need for a heavy, heavily armored carrier to transport reserve aircraft, fuel, and additional weaponry, it made several questionable decisions. The plan to turn the battleship's unfinished hull into a carrier and the rushing of construction had a profound detrimental effect on construction and testing of the new ship. Assigned to the ship, Captain Toshio Abe worried about the level of completion and the depth of testing for the aircraft carrier when his ship was commissioned to Yokosuka on November 19, 1944. He was ordered to depart by the 28th and requested an extension, which was denied. His executive officer brought up concerns about his carrier's watertight compartments. High Command had not carried out standard air pressure tests to ensure they were in fact watertight. Particular concern was shared about an American submarine attack causing seawater to enter the ship if the compartments were not as watertight as intended. Additionally, worries were shared that the unusual passages that went down the entire length of the carrier might limit their ability to quickly respond and carry out an evacuation. The crew was not drilled on exit procedures for emergencies, which at the moment was not a point of consideration for Abe. The ship also had unsealed holes in electrical cable bulkheads, ventilation ducts, and some pipes. Aside from the exposed materials, fire emergency materials were not present, and the fire mains didn't even have pumps. The crew, although made of experienced men, did not know how to use the portable pumps found on the ship. The crew of the supporting destroyers, the Isokaze, Hamakaze, and Yukikaze, were also exhausted from only three days of repairs right after the Battle of Leyte Gulf before embarking on this new mission. Further signs of mistakes and insufficient checks came in the form of malfunctions all over the ship. Out of the twelve boilers on the carrier, only eight were operational, and out of those, only six were turned on. American Pursuit Since the request for an extension had been denied, Shinano left for Kure, where the ship would undergo a final fitting out before heading for the Philippines and Okinawa on November 28th at 6 p.m. Captain Toshio Abe would be promoted to Rear Admiral for completing the mission. Abe had a crew of 2,175 in addition to 300 shipyard employees and 40 civilians. The unfinished watertight doors were left open for ease of movement and access through the complicated passages. Shinano was expected to carry 20 fighters, 20 bombers, and 7 scout planes to the Philippines, but to Kure it would be transporting 6 Shinyo boats and 50 Oka, rocket-powered kamikaze planes. The journey to Kure was scheduled for 16 hours. However, the ship would only travel for under three hours before it was detected by the Americans. At 8.48 p.m., Commander Joseph F. Enright of the Archer Fist submarine saw Shinano on the radar and decided to follow the ship on a parallel course. After an hour and a half of this chase, the crew of Shinano detected the enemy following them. 
Shinano had the technology to outrun the submarine, but was advancing in a zigzag to avoid other submarines, slowing it down to the Archerfisher's pace. At 15 minutes to 11, the Isokaze broke formation to investigate the submarine. Captain Abe believed the submarine was trying to lure the destroyer away so a wolf pack could overpower them. He ordered the Isokaze back so they could try and outrun the Archerfish. While they did speed away, after just a few hours they had to slow down to avoid problems with overheating. Submarine versus Supercarrier The Archerfish had a sense of the Shinano's direction, and relentlessly followed until Captain Abe made a grave mistake and turned Shinano southwest at three in the morning, directly into the submarine's path. Archerfish submerged, advancing to the east, and Commander Enright prepared his torpedoes. Shinano practically gave the Archerfish the perfect shot. At 15 minutes past three, Commander Enright had launched six of his torpedoes and dropped 400 feet deep into the ocean to avoid retaliation. Four of the six torpedoes struck the carrier. The stern took the first hit, which flooded storage compartments and sleeping quarters. The engine room flooded from the second hit, the third boiler room flooded from the third hit, as did the two contiguous boiler rooms, and the starboard air compressor room took on the fourth hit, rupturing an oil tank. Captain Abe is said to have dismissed the damage as controllable, partially because he held American torpedoes in contempt for being weak and inaccurate. He kept the ship at maximum speed, which in turn only increased the flooding. Once the damage could no longer be ignored, Abe changed course to nearby Shiono Point. At around 4.20 in the morning, the captain ordered the port outerboard tanks to be flooded to counter the weight of the flooded areas and keep the ship stable. This worked for very little time, and by 5 a.m. the 40 civilians were being evacuated via the destroyers, allegedly only doing it because they were in the way of the crew. It was evident that the ship would go down when the engines shut down by 7 a.m. The captain tried having the destroyers tow the carrier, but they could not handle the massive weight and the cables snapped. The carrier lost all electric power by 9 a.m., and soon after the captain ordered all the crew to abandon ship. The ship sank 65 miles from Japanese land. Secret Sinking In light of the attack, the carrier was erased from the naval register, and those rescued were kept in isolation to avoid having the press hear about it. The sinking was kept as good of a secret as the construction, so much so that the U.S. Office of Naval Intelligence at first did not believe Commander Enright's claim to have sunk a carrier. Due to the insistence of Enright's claim, and to the commander submitting a drawing of the ship he attacked, he received credit from the acting commander of the Pacific Fleet Submarine Force for sinking a Hayatake carrier. The United States would only discover the truth and award Commander Enright with a Navy Cross once the war was over. Thanks for watching. And thanks again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video and offering Dark Docs viewers this exclusive offer. Click on the link in the description below and use the invitation code BATTLESTATIONS2020 to receive free bonuses as first-time Wargaming users.